Hi guys, it's Mrs. Longmire here. In our previous reading lesson, we talked about how readers have different voices and we looked at two different voices that readers can have. We had looked at the reading voice, which is the voice that actually says the words and looks at the pictures. It's, it's what the words and pictures say. And then we looked at the thinking voice. And this is more the, the whisper voice in your head when you're reading. It's what the words and pictures mean. And we talked about how you really need both voices. You need to have that reading voice to read the words, but then you need to stop and have thoughts. Read some more words, have thoughts. Good readers use both of these voices together to really understand what they're reading. And today, we're going to look at how you can use both of these voices in lots of different types of text. Sometimes it'll be a book or a story, like we did last time with Pete the Cat. Sometimes it will be a nonfiction text. Sometimes it might be an image or a picture or a video or a chart or a math problem. There's lots of different types of text. And it could be on an iPad or a computer or just a real book that you're holding. And so there's different types of text, but you can use your reading and thinking voice in, together in all of those types of text. And so I'm going to show you how that could work today. And I'm going to show you in some different texts and then let you have a chance to try it in some different texts. Okay, so we're going to start with Epic. We're going to go back to Epic today. And this is a book called Different Same, and it's a nonfiction book. Okay. We are all different as different can be. Take a quick look. It's easy to see. I gallop, zebra. I leap, ring-tailed lem lemur. Tiger, I prowl. Bumblebee, I fly. But look closer now. We all have stripes. Oh, yes, I hadn't really thought about how a zebra and a lemur were the same, or a tiger and a bee, but they all have stripes. You can look at the picture. Oh, that makes sense. I live in the jungle, tiger. I live in the forest, wombat. I live in the Arctic walrus. I live in a house, dog. But look closer now, we all have whiskers. Ugh, what? I never thought about how a walrus could be have anything similar as a dog or a wombat. But look, they all have whiskers. That is a way they're all alike. That's really interesting. I never thought about that before. I'm blubbery, walrus. I'm wrinkly, elephant. I'm bristly, warthog. I'm smooth, narwhal. But look closer now, we all have tusks. But you do your thinking voice about what you're thinking about with tusks and what about these animals. Yes. Were you thinking you would never have thought an elephant would have anything the same as a narwhal or a warthog? They all have those tusks. They look like teeth, don't they? Or horns. I stalk, lion. I root, warthog. I race, horse. I roam, bison. But look closer now, we all have manes. I want you to think about what a mane is. What does it mean, stalk or root? Think about that for a second. Mane is hair, isn't it? And I always knew about a lion having a mane and a horse, but I never knew a warthog had a mane. Did you? Or stalk. That kind of means walk and, and, and look closely. Or root. It must mean getting something in the ground, getting something out of the ground. I'm leathery rhinoceros. I'm shaggy bison. I'm lean, Impala. I'm shiny, rhinoceros beetle. But look closer, we all have horns. Use your thinking voice. What does that mean, leathery and lean and shaggy? Hmm. Yeah, lean, that means skinny. Like, the, like if, you have, if you're lean, you don't have much fat on your body. And shaggy? Well, I've heard that about with hair, so I never thought about a bison being shaggy, did you? And leathery, I know like leather furniture or leather jacket, but I never thought about a rhinoceros feeling leathery. 
love those words. So I think, see how this could work? You can use your reading voice and your thinking voice when you're reading about nonfiction, not just stories like Pete the Cat, but nonfiction too. Let's try another type of text. Let's look at some pictures. And when you have a picture and no words, your reading voice can still read what the picture says. You can say things like, I see, and just say what you see in the picture. That's using your reading voice. So for this picture, I see two dogs. I see a yellow dog. I see a brown dog. I see a can in the dog's mouth. I see silly string all over the other dog. Now let me use my thinking voice. What do I think happened here? Well, it looks to me like that the one dog bit down and squeezed the can and the silly string went all over the other dog. And the other dog looks confused. Like he's going, hmm, what is this stuff all over me? <laughs> he looks kind of confused, doesn't he? So I think the one dog bit the can and sprayed silly string all over the other dog. See how that, that's the voice that's whispering to us what happened? Let's try another one, and I'll let you get a chance to try it, okay? I'll do the reading voice. I see an ice cream cone upside down. I see sun shining because I see a shadow. I see a puddle of brown ice cream. Okay, thinking voice. Think about what you think happened. Mm. I bet you were talking about how it's hot, weren't you? Because its sun is shining and so it melted, all melted quickly. Or about how the cone is turned upside down. Somebody must have dropped it. Or how it might be chocolate ice cream because I know that brown ice cream is usually chocolate. See all those whispering voices. Were they whispering to you too? Yeah, let's try another one. I see a girl with her hand on her head. I see a thermometer. I see a robe in pajamas. I see a sad face. I see messy hair. Use your thinking voice. What do you think is happening? Did you think she's sick? Me too. Were you thinking she has a thermometer and you do that to take your temperature? And if you if it's too high, then you have a fever? Or were you thinking she's got pajamas and a robe on? And when you don't feel well, you usually wear that stuff all day long and you don't you don't change into regular clothes. Or she's got her hand on her head. Maybe she's got a headache with her with being sick and her sad face. You know, it's no fun to be sick and feel like that and miss school. Were those, is that what you were thinking too? Awesome, let's try one more. I see a kid with his head in his hands, staring at vegetables. I see a whole plate of vegetables. I see a kind of a frowny face. Use your thinking voice. What's going on in this picture? He doesn't want to eat the vegetables, does he? He's got a whole plate full of vegetables, so he hasn't eaten any. And he's just staring at him like, do I really have to eat this? Have you ever felt like that? Maybe your parents are making you eat it before you can get up from the table. And he looks so not interested in the vegetables. Is that what you thought too? So see how this can work? You can use your reading and your thinking voice when you're just looking at pictures or videos. Let's try one more type of text. This is a bar graph from a first grade classroom. And so if I use my reading voice, I see I can read the words. It says bar graphs. It says color the insect, count each kind of insect. And I see lots of, I see like pink butterflies and yellow bees and green beetles and blue flies. And then at the bottom, it says graph the data you collected. Insects I see. See, one, two, three, four, five, six beetles and eight bumblebees and six flies and 
six butterflies. Okay, now let's use your thinking voice. What are you thinking? What are they doing here? Were you thinking they colored them first and then counted them and then they colored a square for each bug that they colored, that they found? Mm -hmm. And you're thinking how you could graph? Are you thinking about which one they had the most of? Yeah, bees, right? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight bees. Yeah. What did they have the least of? Did you say it was a tie between the butterfly, the fly, and the beetle? They all had six, didn't they? So you see how you can use your reading and thinking voice for math problems too, or graphs or charts? You can read what it says, but then you have to have that thinking voice whispering to you and telling you how to do what, what this means and, and um, put it all together. So if you were in Mrs. Longmire's class, I would have you take your reading and thinking voice signs that you maybe you made from the last time and use different types of text. Look through your house, look through magazines and use pictures or books and use pictures or turn on the TV and do short little video commercials even and talk about what you see in the pictures and videos and then what you think it means or you know, get on, get on your computer or your iPad and look at nonfiction types of text and use your reading voice to read what it says and then use your thinking voice to think about it. That's just what you would do if you were in Mrs. Longmire's class, but your teacher may have a better idea. Thanks and have a great day.